Hi, I'm Ed Liss from the Great American Jukebox. This jukebox is a 1963 Rockola, the model 408 dubbed the Rhapsody. When I found this machine many, many years ago, it had been dead for about 40 plus years. It wasn't working and all the components were intact, but unfortunately all the chrome trim on the machine had flaked off. My friends told me to just take it to the dump and forget it. But I'd like to unveil a story to you that tells you why I restored this jukebox when it was so in such poor condition. David Rockola was a brilliant businessman that came to this country in the late 1920s from Manitoba, Canada, and he started out building scales and slot machines for Las Vegas, although Las Vegas didn't exist at that time. He also created a lot of different games, pinball games, games of chance. They were called uh, gambling devices, but they were used more in stores with distributed cigars, if you won a game, not so much money. And in 1935, he built his first jukebox, uh, which was a wooden cabinet. It held 12 record selections, 78 RPM, and it was put on the Queen Mary on her maiden voyage. And that jukebox was on the maiden voyage of that ship when it sailed from New York City to England, I believe. He was a brilliant businessman, and at the beginning of the Depression, his creditors, who had loaned him money to start his factory, wanted to be paid because they were kind of disappointed that the Depression was ruining everybody's lives. But Mr. Rockola didn't have the money to pay them back. So he said to them, if you turn my business off now, you'll get nothing on your investment. You lose all your money and you'll make a zero. He said, but you let me stay in business, I'll pay you back every nickel with interest. So they let him stay in business and he was in his own company until 1993 when he died at the age of 96, still running his own company. The company now is run by Glenn Streeter, who still makes Rockola equipment. This jukebox was in such poor condition, I started to restore it only because he had done me a big favor when I started my computer business back in the early 90s. I ran a fax on demand company, which eventually turned into an internet service provider in the mid-90s. When I acquired this machine in the early 2000s, I remembered a little incident I had back in the early 90s for my business, where the telephone company I was using, the aggregator, called me, the CEO of the company called me, and said, Mr. Liss, I'm shutting down your business because you have a back balance of $3,000 and it has to be paid. Now, I had an 800 number of business. Fax on demand was all 800, in and out. So I thought of Mr. Rockola's little incident back in the Depression, and I said to the CEO of the aggregator, I said, look, if you shut my business down, you won't get your money back, and you'll lose everything. I said, if you let me stay in business, I'll pay you back the back balance and everything you're owed with interest, and we can go forward. And it was a pregnant pause on the other side of the line. And he said to me, you're the second check written after your mortgage. And I stayed in business another 18 years and ran a successful company until I retired. When this machine came along in such poor condition and I was advised not to restore it because it's just how bad it looked and it wasn't even working, I thought about Mr. Rockola's incident and how he saved my butt back in the early 90s and I restored this machine as payback for Mr. Rockola saving my business. But it took seven years. These machines are very complex. And after seven years, this machine was restored to brand new operating condition. It's a stereophonic jukebox, and it uses an 18-watt stereo amplifier and has eight speakers. It has three horn speakers in each of the side chambers and two 12-inch Jensen woofers, bass speakers, at the bottom. So the sound is absolutely outstanding, beautiful fidelity but it took seven years to restore this machine from garbage into a museum quality product. I'm gonna play this machine now and let you hear it and you can watch it work and listen to the fidelity of it and absolutely was worth restoring. When my friends heard it after telling me to take it to the dump when it looked like garbage, they were in shock and they said they did the right thing. But again, I did it because I owed Mr. Arcola a debt that I had to repay and this machine was the payment that, of, that I owed him of that debt. So here we go. I'm going to put in the dime. You get two plays for a dime. And the select light is on. In 1957, 
This record was recorded on the Mercury label. It was done um, in a studio where it only took 45 minutes out of the hour to make the song they initially were making, so they had a 15 minutes left on the recording session. They decided to do this kind of quirky tune called Little Darlin, and it became a cult classic. And here is the original recording of Little Darlin on his 1963 Rockola Rhapsody. Oh, you. 